Hello there guys and welcome to this Navigraph Charts 8 overview and tutorial video. Navigraph Charts 8 has been recently released, bringing a host of new features as well as a redesigned user interface and brand new user experience. Let's begin with an overview. If you look at the left side of the screen, we have the search box, flights, airports, as well as the pinboard. The small control panel here allows you to switch the map layers between IFR low airways, high airways, as well as a VFR map. Notably, VFR flight planning is one of the most notable new features in this version of Navigraph Charts. A host of brand new map filters are now available to you in this version of Navigraph Charts. They are grouped logically to make flight planning easier. As you can see here, navigation, VFR navigation, airspaces, infrastructure, airports, and base. You are able to toggle any of these filters on and off by simply clicking on the icon. You can also turn the complete section off, like so. When you are loaded in your favorite flight simulator, you are able to bring up the moving maps. The moving maps can be turned on and off, and you can also turn the follow me feature on and off from this menu. You are also able to change the map orientation from track to north. You can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out and navigate through the maps in Navigraph Charts. You are also able to use the little control panel on the right side of the screen to zoom in and out. The settings menu is now located at the bottom left corner of the user interface, as you can see here. The settings menu contains information about the current version of Navigraph Charts, a general section that allows you to change the theme from day and night, and also choose whether you want Navigraph to always be displayed on top of other applications by turning this on or off. You can also change the scale of the map projection, as well as enable or disable the auto follow me feature. You are also able to change the charts mode from standard to ICO. The globe projection option is a brand new feature in Navigraph charts that is particularly useful for your long haul flights. It will help you track your route. For example, consider London Heathrow to JFK. Let us now take a look at the search option available in Navigraph charts. The search option allows you to search for anything, VOR, intersection, an airport. Let's take an example. Let us try Kilo Foxtrot Romeo. As you can see, anything that contains those three letters is now displayed in the search results. The first one here is a VOR station, but there are also airports and waypoints. Let's go ahead and click on the KFR VOR station. Clicking on any item in the search results will take the map to that exact location with a pin to show it on the map. The specific information on the selected item, which in this case is a VOR DME station, is displayed in the box below the search results, as you can see here. Let us try an ICO code of an airport. Let's try London Heathrow. As you can see, we have London Heathrow displayed in the search results. You now have also access to the charts by clicking on the charts icon here. Once you do so, you will have access to all the information related to London Heathrow. Information, which contains a general tab, the runways at London Heathrow with the favorable runway for takeoff and landing, as you can see here. The dimensions of the runway, as well as the bearing, are all included. One of the nice features in Navigraph Charts 8 is the ability to zoom in all the way and look at the airport details. When clicking on any of the exclamation icons next to a runway, it will display the pin at that runway. This is particularly useful for situational awareness. You also have access to the weather information, both the METAR and the TAD. All available radio frequencies are also displayed from within the comms tab. From the Charts tab, you have access to all the available charts for the selected airport. As you can see here, we have all the stars, all the approach plates, taxi plates, as well as the SID, 
and the reference charts as well. You can also visually inspect all the procedures by clicking on the Procedures tab. As you can see, we have access to the departures, arrivals, as well as the approaches. From the Flights menu, you are able to create a new flight by clicking a new flight icon or importing a flight, either from a file or from SimBrief. If you have your SimBrief flight plan ready, simply click on Import from SimBrief. It will display the latest SimBrief flight plans for you to choose from. In our example, we're going to select London Heathrow to JFK. Once you select the desired imported flight plan from SimBrief, we click on the Import and Open button here. We now have the entire route plotted on the globe. As you can see here, starting with London Heathrow, with the SIDS and the STARS, all the way to JFK. On the right side here, you have a flight name. You can change this, but normally it displays the ICO departure arrival airports as well as the flight number. It also shows you the total distance to your destination. The flight mode can be switched from IFR to VFR if you're flying VFR. The chart mode can be changed from CAO to standard. It will also display the cruising altitude for this flight which is in this case 36,000 feet. From the export flight plan option, you are able to now export this flight plan to your favorite simulator or aircraft. As you can see here, support available for Microsoft Flight Simulator, P3D, X-Plane 11, 12, as well as other add-ons. You can also choose to copy the flight plan to the clipboard. One of the brand new and very useful features in Navigraph Charts 8 is the sync with current flight. When this option is turned on, Navigraph will automatically bring all the important charts and pin them to the display right here. As you can see, we have London Heathrow, airport information, as well as the departures and JFK arrivals, as well as the airport information at JFK. As you can see, we have London Heathrow here as the origin airport. From this menu, you are able to search for additional airports and add them to the routes. You also have access to the charts at London Heathrow. If you are not using SimBrief, you are able to create a new flight by selecting New Flight. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to give our flight a name. In our case, we're going to type Echo Gulf Lima Lima to Kilo Juliet Foxtrot Kilo. That is London Heathrow to JFK. And now we're going to select the origin airport and the destination. From the search bar, we can now select London Heathrow and we're going to say add to route. Next, we're going to go to our destination and we're going to select JFK. And we're going to select add to route. You are able to create an auto route from London Heathrow to JFK by clicking on the Auto Route button here. You are, of course, able to select your departure runway and your procedures by selecting from the four available runways or 28 departures here. The Auto Route menu is going to prompt you to select the type of airway type for your flight. We're going to leave it on High and we're going to click on Create. As you can see, Navigraph Charts has now created an auto route from London Heathrow to JFK. Please note that Navigraph Charts will not automatically select the departure and arrival procedures or the runways for your flight. However, it does provide you with the necessary tools to make a logical selection. Let's take a look at London Heathrow with the four available runways. As you can see, we have runway 27 right and 27 left favorable for departure and landing. In our case, we're going to go ahead and select runway 27 right and say add to route. Now we're going to select our departure procedure. From runway 27 right, there are a number of procedures that we can select here. As you can see, you can use the overlay here to overlay that specific departure procedure on the map. Let's go ahead and select the Debt to Foxtrot and say Add to Route. We're going to go to our destination and we're going to repeat the same steps. First, we're going to select the arrival runway 
Looks like runway 22 left is favorable for landing. We're going to add, say, at route. Then we're going to go to the arrivals at JFK. And we are going to select the Carmen 4. And finally, the approach. We can select the ILS runway 04 left. And we're going to say at to route. If you have your flight plan ready in the clipboard, you can always come to the top of the screen here and paste your entire flight plan from SimBrief and just hit enter and it will automatically show the flight plan on the map as well. One of the most notable features in Navigraph Charts 8 is the ability to plan for a VFR flight. I'm not an expert in VFR flying, however I will show you the basics of creating a VFR flight plan. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select on new flight and we're going to call this Echo Golf Tango Romeo to Echo Golf Tango Bravo. And we're going to make sure that the flight mode is set to VFR. Chart mode is CAO and the cruise altitude is 3000 feet. We're going to select the origin airport as Echo Golf Tango Romeo, which is Elstree Aerodrome in the United Kingdom at Tarut. And as you can see now, it is selected on the map. And we're going to select the destination as uh, Wickham Air Park, Echo Golf Tango Bravo, also in the United Kingdom. As you can see, we can now see different, um, different uh, um, arrows here, which is showing the VFR transitions, as well as the holding patterns uh, for VFR flying. We can also very easily spot the VFR waypoints, as you can see here, the canal bend. Grimm's Tower, Maple Cross, and so on and so forth. So it's actually very easy to create the uh, VFR plan. We're going to select Canal Bend to be one of the uh, first VFR waypoints to fly to. As you can see now, we have the waypoint here, Canal Bend, and we're going to say Add to Route. And now this is selected. Next, we're going to go to Maple Cross, and we're also going to add that to our flight plan. Now it will ask you, where do you want it? Do you want it after or before Canal Bend? We're going to say after in our case, and we're going to say add. And actually, you can go back to, um, you know, you can go back to uh, another waypoint. So for example, we can select Grimm's Tower. And once you see Grimm's Tower, and we're going to select add to route. Now it says after or before. So I'm going to select before and say add. And now, as you can see, it will take us from Canal Bend to Grimm's Tower, then to Maple Cross. Then we're going to go to St. Uh, Giles or Giles. Uh, so we're going to select that one and say add to route and after. So after we're done with Maple Cross, we're flying here. And then we're going to select um, Elstree, uh, where we are uh, going to end our plan. As you can see now, we have the entire VFR flight plan mapped uh, here. And it should create for an interesting a flight as well. Now what you can do is you can export this uh, flight plan as you can see here. We're going to select export and we're going to select Microsoft Flight Simulator and now you have EGTR to EGTB flight plan ready to go. We are going to select this and place it in our documents folder and we're going to save it and now we're going to bring up Microsoft Flight Simulator and see how we load this VFR flight plan and what it would look like in the simulator. We have now Microsoft Flight Simulator started with the Cessna 172 selected as the aircraft of choice. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to click on more and load and save. Next, we're going to load from this PC. And now, as you can see, if we navigate to the documents folder, we have the flight plan that we've created with Navigraph Charts. We're going to select and say Open. And now, as you can see, we have exactly the same flight plan that we've created in Navigraph Charts. And we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and select Fly Now. And moments later, we are at Elstree Aerodrome in the United Kingdom at runway 26, ready for departure. As you can see, the flight plan is now loaded here. You are also able to view the flight plan using your VFR map. And if we zoom in here, you will see that the flight plan has loaded and it looks exactly like the flight plan that we've created 
using uh, Navigraph charts, and now we are ready to go. It is worthwhile mentioning that while there are freeware tools that can achieve what Navigraph Charts 8 can achieve, it remains in my view to be the best available charts program for flight simulation. The new additions into Navigraph Charts 8 without a doubt makes it the very best charts program available today for flight simulation. It is robust, user-friendly, and feature-rich. I highly recommend Navigraph Charts 8 with confidence. Well, folks, this is it for this short video. I hope that you have found it useful and insightful. If you have any questions, as usual, please do post them in the comment section below. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye for now.